Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. This is a different broadcast today. Uh, this is Keys to Your Best Life. My name is Maggie Cavanaugh. I'm your host. My guest today had a migraine, and she will be visiting with us next week. So today I wanted to do a special edition because this week is very strategic. It's very important, and I want to show you why. Most people out there know about the National Day of Prayer, but I want you to take a look at this clip because this is not only just a, this Thursday is not just your regular National Day of Prayer. It's actually the 70th anniversary. Now we know the prayer has been going on much longer than that. Uh, Washington was a huge advocate for it, but I want you to take a look at this clip uh, real quick and then we'll come back and talk about why we need to pray and what seven areas we need to pray for this Thursday, National Day of Prayer. America has lived through many a cold and dark night when the cupped hands of prayer were our only shield against the extinction of courage. Though that flame has flickered from time to time, it burns brightest when we are willing. Ronald Reagan penned those words in his 1986 presidential proclamation, and they are just as true today as they were back then. Since the original 13 colonies, the leadership of this great nation have always considered prayer to be a great privilege. We can make it the true meaning of prayer, much more important in the lives of all of our children. That's how it's very much open to us. We believe that the Almighty hears our prayers and answers those who seek Him. The story of the National Day of Prayer began 70 years ago. 70 years? That's right. On February 3rd, 1952, the young fiery preacher stood atop the steps of America's capital and challenged our leaders to pray. And that fire still burns on today, stronger, but with just as much passion. Shortly after, President Truman signed the National Day of Prayer into law. We join in offering our thanks to the providence which has guided and sustained us. I, Harry S. Truman, President of the United States of America, do hereby appoint a day of prayer. But this would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of a group of dedicated believers who championed the cause with Congress to amend the law. Since 1988, when founding chairwoman Bonnette Bright stood beside President Ronald Reagan as he signed the amendment into law. We have seen faithful leaders from all walks of life humbly lead the charge to mobilize America in biblically unified prayer. To encourage and equip believers all across America to fill heaven with rich prayers for our nation and each other. We, we are, are the, the now, now generation. generation. And we're calling all Americans to stand together, united. united, as we set aside time to pray in humility, with fasting and thanksgiving, for the beauty and wonder of this great land, and lift our hearts and voices to the Lord. And Lord, we ask that you grant our government leaders the wisdom they need to act with integrity, and bless our military with divine protection, courage, and dependence on you. And Lord, we ask that you would strengthen your people who are in the media, and that you restore character and ethics to those who produce content. Oh, make my school sweet. We're inviting you to become a part of this rich history. Help us mobilize our efforts by continuing the wonderful tradition of publicly praying in America the first Thursday in May. Throughout America's wonderful history, prayer has been woven into the fabric of our nation, and the Lord has been our strength, our refuge, and our source. Jesus is the liberty that sets captives free to live and love God with the destiny that he alone has designated for each of us individually and as a country and as a nation. Lord, we humbly ask you to pour out your love, life, and liberty. Amen. Amen. So I hope that you guys caught all of that. And I hope that you share this broadcast with your sphere of influence because prayer is powerful. Uh, last week, I had Susan Carter on here. She is the founder of the Gap House of Prayer in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I just want to explain to you guys just how important your prayers are. Now, you know this, right? You've heard this since you were a kid. As long as you've been a Christian, you've heard, you know, you need to pray, you need to pray, you need to pray. But many times, some people will say to me, Maggie, I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray. I don't know where to pray, when to pray, and so forth. 
pray prayer is communication with God. You can do it anywhere, anytime. But on the National Day of Prayer, there's a prayer focus, a prayer strategy, if you will. It is seven focal points. Now, you might hear, depending on what camp you're out of, it might be the seven spheres of influence uh, adopted by Bill Bright. Uh, and we heard about his wife there. She was a huge part, and, and they were both a huge part involving in the National Day of Prayer. But also, there are other um, ministries out there that call it the seven mountains. And so whatever the case may be, it is important that we pray for these seven areas. This coming Thursday is National Day of Prayer. It is the 70th one uh, historically that is actually where it was into law. Prior to that, Washington, he always called for a day of prayer. It was super important. So today, uh, since my you know guests had to cancel on me, I thought I'm just going to do a special edition on this topic because it is so important. Today is Monday and National Day of Prayer is Thursday. That gives you plenty of time to find a local event or an event online where you can plug in and you can join in prayer. So if if you are praying in your small group, I had the honor, okay, total honor for many years to be a coordinator for the National Day of Prayer. And when I came to Tennessee uh, and was doing marketplace ministry, I did the National Day of Prayer thing at my local place of where I worked. Um, and I always had different people come and speak pray in these areas. I had the honor of having, you know, people come from the radio station to pray for media, military to pray for military. And it's just really, it was such an honor. Uh, but that season closed for me. It's been, oh my gosh, I have not done that since 2013. However, last year I was part of a broadcast on the National Day of Prayer. Why? Because I believe in prayer is important. Now, with that being said, I believe we should be praying these seven areas every day, every day, or as much as you can, as you can, and some days more than others. Uh, you know, we should, you know, we, for those of you that have kids in school, pray for the school. So I just want to give you these quick seven areas so you can know how to pray and what to pray and so forth. So the first area that I really want to cover this, okay, we just came out of an election year. There's a lot of division, a lot of divisiveness. People, I was, I, I will tell you, I was driving down a road the other day, me and my sister, we were going out to the country and I seen this sign and it said, um, F the current president. And I won't say his name. I don't want to get flagged. I'm already censored enough, <laughs> but is it literally somebody had this on their front porch and I'm like, listen, I didn't vote for the man, but come on, y'all. Respect, honor, you know, we need to respect those in authority. And whether we choose, um, whether we like it or not, the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the father. That's in Proverbs. Proverbs 21, 1. Every election, I pray that because there are times that people get into office that I voted for and I'm like, yes, go God. And other times where people get into office and I'm like, oh, Lord, you know. So, but the, either way, we have to understand uh, God used some wicked people in the Old Testament uh, to turn things around. And I'm not saying anything, you know, I don't even, this is not a political broadcast. This is a broadcast telling you governmental authorities, we must pray for them, whether we like them or not. Um, you know, my mom used to tell me when I was a little girl, she'd say, you don't have to like them, but you have to love them. I'm like, what? How can that be? But even if you do not like the current administration, it is our job to pray. First Timothy 2, 1 through uh, 3 talks about prayer and interceding and giving thanks for all kings and authority, right? That means our, our local officials. That means everybody in authority. And it's God's command to every believer today to pray for these people, whether we like them or not. So, you can pray for the leaders uh, to have righteous, godly decisions. You can pray for them, uh, you know, when it comes to the laws and the purpose and, and, and so forth. But while you're praying for those in authority, pray that they'll become godly men and women to rise up and, and people that will rise up and take their place. If you don't like what the current uh, administration is doing, pray for those coming next. They're coming. OK, um, we have got to um the fight is in the in the spirit realm. OK, it's on our knees. So pray for federal, um, state, local and military. Pray for the leaders. Divine protection over our troops, man. I'm telling you, our troops are out there. They they are on the front face. They get neglected. Stand and pray for them, for a dependency, for them to have on God. And for those that don't believe to come to know the knowledge of God so they can withstand the pressures that they deal with in military and government. So that's the number one sphere of influence or seven, you know, one of the mountains, whichever camp you're from. The second is media. Okay. Whew. 
This is why I'm in media. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Why I broadcast, why I'm on media is because of the fact that the influences and the culture are great. And so we have seen so many things happen over the media. We have seen the media become one voice and it should not be. We should have freedom of speech. Uh, therefore, you know, I, we won't even go there, but we're going to pray. We're going to pray for that. Okay. For the, for the, uh, the lack of integrity. We're going to pray for the media to tear down foundations and spirit, you know, in the spirit realms, because we need godly people to rise up in media. We need producers, station managers, anchors, broadcasters, reporters. We need them to have a Holy Ghost conviction to speak the truth because sometimes that gets out of there. So have faith to believe God for the media. OK, just have faith to believe God to turn the media around in this country where we get both sides, full sides. And we don't have to rely on what the parrot is saying, just repeating over and over, trying to convince people of a certain thing. The first source is should be the word of God. And if they're not speaking what's coming from the word, the word, it is part of the Antichrist spirit. So we need to pray for Christian media, pray specifically for the media that I'm involved in. I love Creative Motion Network. Uh, I am honored to be part of that network. Um, network and and on social media platforms pray for those of us the broadcast you know i've gotten hit pretty hard um because i speak the truth you know i'm just saying i speak the truth i speak the truth according to the word of god and that's the way it'll always stay for me so the other area so right now we've already prayed for government media and the next area is the arts and entertainment center okay yeah, pray for the arts and entertainment that they will have godly influences on this culture. You know, I have a friend uh, that I'm going to interview in a couple of weeks who is an artist and he talks about the connection between art and the culture and, and artists are bringing out what the culture is saying. OK, and that's why people relate to that. But there's a scripture in Isaiah 520 that says, woe to those who call good um evil good and call good evil you know uh talking about the darkness and the light and because the reality is is that we pay money and i'm not when i say we i'm not talking about me and you if you're watching this you're probably a christian but if you're not a christian think about this because people pay money to operate in fear <laughs> horror movies you know what does horror movies do? It scares you. It creates fear. It causes you to have nightmares. It creates you to look over your shoulder. Fear has torment. The Bible's clear about that. Why would we pay for that? We we pay for industries that have, you know, all kinds of horrible things. The nation is in a crisis when it comes to arts and entertainment. And, you know, and I'm not hating on the people that do it. They are just responding to the demands of the culture. And they are also responding to their own limited understanding. Because unless you know Christ, follow Christ, and desire to be like him, you're going to and operate the worlds of the system so we have to pray for arts and entertainment okay i'm talking about to uh, be praying for the producers and and those that are you know um editors and magazines and you know just for them to have um a shift in the spirit right for the entertainment world more and more christian films are coming out more and more christians are standing up in media it's super duper important business business is important okay i have a tip making business on the side that helps support our ministry i i know how important it is to pray for those in leadership i spent 15 years in a marketplace ministry and um you know i prayed for the ceos and the cfos and all the way down supervisors whether i liked them or not because we have to pray for businesses pray for local businesses in your community you you know praying for the mom and pop stores praying for supernatural increase but also when we pray for businesses we also need to pray against businesses that are you know like trafficking and pornography and all of the things that put strongholds in the lives of people listen those those businesses would not prosper if it wasn't for a jacked up heart of man desiring evil, wicked things. Well, you know, like we just read the scripture in Isaiah, woe to those who call evil good. So let me get a drink here. And my drink is almost empty. Yikes. Okay. So we pray for military, media. Uh, we pray for businesses. The number four thing that, and, and, uh, arts and entertainment. The number fifth, five, fifth thing is education. Okay. I'm just going to say straight up. All right. Our kids are being indoctrinated. And if you do not believe me, go look at their curriculums. Go read their curriculums. I'm appalled. I'm appalled. I've got grandkids. Um, I've got two here in the state and and three out of state. And I'm telling you, 
they are being indoctrinated. We must pray for the educational system against the unbiblical agendas that they have and the indoctrination uh, of how they would create them to hate themselves, how they would create them to hate others. Uh, they say it's all in the name of inclusive, but it's not inclusive. It is, is opening them up to another realm. So pray that they're brought back to that place of innocence. The innocence is being taken away from our children. So we must pray for the educational system. Pray for the teachers. Pray for the principals, administrators, school boards, everyone that is in that area. They need our help in the spirit realm. We need to pray for them. And number six, religion. Now, I'm not talking about religion, religion. We need to pray, okay, against um the, the demonic religions that will take people to hell. I'm just saying straight up, it will take them to hell. Um, you know, it, our country needs Jesus, period. And there are so many people that are caught up in um, an unbiblical truth. You know, uh, they believe that all roads lead to the same places. I was telling some kids Saturday night when I was teaching, this is not true. This is a lie. Uh, that's why Jesus said that he is the true vine. He is the truth, the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. We must pray for religion and we must start contending in the spirit realm um, because the greatest revival that this country has ever seen we're on the brink, man. We are on the brink because uh, I was just reminded, Dr. Michael Halsey was just telling me uh, in a message earlier today, I read it and I was like, yes, uh, because he, he was saying that Smith Wigglesworth said years ago that, you know, when we see a decline in the church, then we will see, uh, we'll be right on the brink of the greatest revival ever. So we need to be praying for a breakout of the gospel to be, you know, uh, protected where people can speak the truth and not be censored. Okay. I have seen the censoring. Okay. People can say, Oh, that's your imagination. No, I've been on media for quite a while, long enough to know where my numbers were, where my numbers are. And it's not my viewers. My viewers aren't seeing stuff, right? Why? Because I'm being censored, but I don't care. I'm going to pray. I'm going to continue to pray for these spheres of influence. And then the last one is family because uh, the family's under assault. Okay. Uh, the devil comes in to kill, steal and destroy. We know that John 10, 10, Jesus came to give us life, but we need to be praying because Satan is after, um, you know, families. He's going for the jugular. He wants all, you know, all kids to have premarital sex. He wants people to live together. He wants, you know, abuse, neglect, abortion. You know, he wants all of these areas to be twisted and turned upside down. So the family is unrecognizable. Why? Because because we relate to the father God. Okay. And that he is the perfect father. And we are supposed to, in our households, be, you know, teaching the truth to our, to our kids, our grandkids and passing that down for the future generations. We must contend in the spirit realm for the family. And so there are so many different areas uh, to cover, but those are the seven main ones. And I'm just going to briefly go over them again. There's government, there's media, there's arts and entertainment, there's business, education, religion, family, those are the biggies. Those are the biggies. And that's the ones that are covered on the National Day of Prayer. So my question to you is, are you going to pray on the National Day of Prayer? If you are, that's great. If you And you know what? I encourage you to pray every day, every day, like if it's a National Day of Prayer. Maybe you could even take one of those areas and focus strategically on that. I mean, I'm talking like, okay, this week I'm going to pray for the schools. I'm going to pray for education, pray for the preschools, uh, the elementaries, the middle schools, high schools, universities, pray for the universities. Okay. We have more kids go off and lose their faith in universities than any other time. Now, usually they'll come back around because, you know, the Bible says to train them up in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. Well, let's face it. When they're in college, their brains aren't fully developed. To, you know, I'm not trying to insult anyone. It is a scientific fact that Females' brains are fully developed at 23 and males 25. So they're they're learning all of this and they're getting this ingrained in them. And they, you know, many of them turn away. That's why I'm so pro uh, Christian colleges, because I've known too many. I've seen too many. I've experienced too many kids going off and losing their faith because the world twist things and that little bit of a lie. Okay. They take or they get that little bit of truth and then they build a big lie around it because if there wasn't a little bit of truth, they would not know the difference. Right. So you might be asking, okay, there's those seven areas of prayers, Maggie, seven areas, seven spheres of influence, seven mountains, whatever you want to call them, seven areas that things, everything kind of hinges and branches off of those. Okay. Uh, and when you're praying for government, make sure to pray for military because that's right up in there together. Okay. 
government and military, arts and media, um, you know, education, families, the church, um, you know, just continue to war for these. But I want to give you a few, I want to give you a scripture um, reference in um, Matthew 21, 22. It talks about whatever things you ask, believe that you receive, believe, take those prayers and mix it with faith. Mix it with faith and take authority over fear because it can be pretty fearful what we're seeing right now in the world. And you've got to, uh, you know, the Bible says that some only comes out with fear and pra uh, prayer and fasting. I don't want to tell you when to pray or, or, or when to fast or how to fast. That has to come from the spirit of God. You have to um, be led to fast. But there's different types of fast and I want you to be aware of them. OK, um, if you fast, you can, you know, a, a, tr a true fast is abstaining from, you know, food and drinks except for water. All right. And we see it in Matthew. We see it in Luke. Um, you know, we see. Uh, but you have to remember, you can't go without three days without water. You've got to have water. Water is important. But and then there's, a, you know, that's so if you're fasting, make sure you get a lot of water, period. OK. But a lot of times people can't because of medications or certain circumstances. I kind of fall in this category, not because of medication, but uh, a sugar levels and stuff like that. Uh, and so I usually do like a partial fast. I do what's called a Daniel fast. If you guys remember in the book of Daniel, Daniel fasted, but he re he refrained from the dainties. OK, the dainties were like the sweets and the meats and the and the stuff that you really, really enjoy. Right. And so, you know, getting all those out of there and eating, you know, fruits and vegetables and, and you know, uh, anything that anything that you see. Uh, in the book of Daniel that he did. That's the kind of fasting I do. Another way is juicing. A juice fast is great because you're still getting, you're get, doing all liquids, but you're still getting all the nutrients from the green leafy vegetables and the carrots and all the, you know, apples and everything. And juicing is a great way to fast because you can also be cleansing your body. All, all fasting will cleanse your body. OK, it is healthy. Even people that are not Christ followers, they will fast for uh, health purposes. And so anyway, and then, of course, you know, uh, you know, we look at Ezra uh, um, uh, in Ezra. Yeah, Ezra. Yeah. And um, Esther, they did fast uh, with no food or liquid. Now, I, you know, again, talk to your doctor. Don't go doing stuff based on, I've seen this lady on YouTube or i see this lady on Creative Motion and she told me not to eat. No, no. You pray, seek the Lord, check with your doctor, find out which would be the best fast for you and consider mixing fasting in with your prayers because that is very, very powerful. They go hand in hand. Now, I know I've gone really, really fast, but I had a whole lot to cram into this special edition uh, broadcast and I want you guys to remember the power of prayer is so important. This coming um, Thursday, Thursday. And, and actually you can always remember it by it's the first Thursday of every May is always a national day of prayer. We've had um, most pres presidents will, you know, endorse it and they will have something at the White House. I have not heard that this administration is, whether they do or not, it is totally up to us to pray those seven spheres of influence. So I encourage you guys, whatever you're going through, uh, people that you know and love, they fall in these categories. Pray, 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 pray today, start, start preparing, or maybe start fasting, or maybe start taking, you know, and breaking these down and, and really getting, uh, you know, maybe get a list of your local um, people in office that you could pray over. So remember, you know, the Kings are in authority. We need to pray for them. All right. Government, media, arts, entertainment, educational, businesses, uh, the church, family. These are areas that we can't pray enough for. And I'm praying that you all will have a wonderful National Day of Prayer. I know here in Middle Tennessee, there's a local event. World Outreach always does a great local event. Um, after I quit and being a leader of one, I was like, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, but it was, just, you know, there's a time to season for everything. But I will not stop praying, not only on the National Day of Prayer, but every day communicating with God is an honor. It is. It's an honor to have a relationship with the creator of the universe and talk to him about all the things going on in your own life for and interceding for the lives of those that you love and care for. And even those that you do not know, but praying in those veins of those seven spheres of influence is going to bring us into unity, praying together. Imagine all the people out there, all of them out there praying in um, agreement 
you know, for for good to overtake evil, for life to be, re, you know, restored in the in the families and marriages to be healed and, you know, all of these type of things and for businesses to flourish and for media to be honest. And, you know, I'm just saying, they're just imagine all of the believers together, coming together in one accord, uh, standing in the gap for what we believe to be is true. And I'm telling you guys, now's the time to pray. Now's the time to pray. Don't wait till Thursday thinking, okay, I got those seven points of prayer and Thursday I'm going to pray them. Pray today. Join me today in prayer. Uh, pray every day. But this Thursday, National Day of Prayer, please join the movement. Join the movement. Unity in prayers for these seven areas that will literally change the landscape of our communities, our relationships, and those that we serve. So I just want to thank you guys for logging on. I've been going out of here for 20 minutes, and I didn't mean to take that long, but this is a special edition. Normally, I have a guest. Elizabeth will be with me next Monday instead. And uh, this week, I've got some great guests coming up, so make sure that you watch it. In addition to that, there is a new broadcast, Keys to Your Best Homestead, that is available on uh, um, my only my YouTube channel and on Creative Motion Network, but you can add that channel to your Roku. And I encourage you to do that. God bless you guys. And thank you for watching. Have a great day. And always remember that God is the key to your best life.